There are monsters lurking in the heart of every galaxy known as supermassive black holes. They are capable of swallowing up entire stars, tearing them apart, and spitting them out as raw energy. When galaxies merge, these monsters collide, releasing more energy than 100 billion hydrogen bombs and shaking the very fabric of space itself by producing ripples called gravitational waves. Now suppose there were a pair of colliding supermassive black holes right behind me. Yikes. You would observe my height to get taller and shorter and taller with time, while my width would vice versa appear to get shorter and wider and shorter, as the very space around me is stretched and squeezed by gravitational waves. Whoa. This may seem weird, but it is a prediction of Einstein's theory of relativity. In reality, these waves are extremely faint and are undetectable within the space of this room, but they are detectable at the distances to the stars by observing and timing pulsars. Pulsars are the remnants of massive stars that exploded long ago, leaving behind a small rotating core. They emit beams of radio waves that regularly sweep across our field of view like a lighthouse by precisely timing the arrival of beams from pulsars across the sky down to the nanosecond and looking for moments when these arrival times deviate ever so slightly because of the warping of space, we can detect gravitational waves. There is a global group of scientists and engineers known as the International Pulsar Timing Array currently embarked on this experiment, and they are faced with a problem posed by the interstellar medium, the tenuous collection of gas, dust, and stuff between the stars interferes with the timing of pulsars by delaying their signal by several microseconds. I'm researching a way to mitigate this delay by using one of the most sensitive radio telescopes in the Southern Hemisphere, called the Meerkat, to observe a remarkably bright nearby pulsar named J0437-4715. I know, it's not a very sexy name. And by using algorithms such as the 2D Fourier transform, I'm able to look for intervening magnetic fields that delay the pulsar signal differently depending on their polarized state. You can think of polarized states as simply the unique ways in which the radio waves are shaped and oriented. Now this polarization dependent delay effect known as birefringence is the same effect used by LCD screens to adjust their brightness by rotating incoming polarized light. By Modeling and removing this birefringent delay, we can improve the precision of pulsar timing arrays that may, one day, detect gravitational waves created by colliding supermassive black holes in the distant universe. What's all of this worth, you may wonder? Well, not even Einstein knew the answer to that. Thank you.